Yeah, I'm a paper, so I'm a start on the journey, you know. So, we're on the way to the, um, to the destination. Yeah, we're on our way to the destination right now. A couple of hours, a hours drive. So, go and watch what I want. Stay up on the road. So people, reach, reach my destination. So I need to find a place that we can park and um, park and see where we can find the location. To see where we find, to see where we can find the park now. Go. Because right now, yeah, so that's what I need to do. Need to find a place to stop. Come like a holy for arm. Come like a whole heap of thing that go on a pass a whole heap of um, lawnmower cutting. See, all the man them there, they lawnmower shove out, gas it up. So, I'm going to see it. I'm going to see if I can Google no spot. But first, before I do that, I'm going to try. Go in another place, I'm going to use the bathroom and come back. Alright, my people, so I'm reach at the last river, Kiev. But I'm not open till 8.30. See? So I'm there, so I'm just uh, go and ease myself, relax until the morning. See? Alright, people, so the pony trail, and now we have got the spot where we are going to meet up on the people and the thing. The mom, I'm not in a bush, down, so yeah, so we're there on the trail. Catch on when we reach around at the bridge. So we had it today. Be better you come back to come on, come on. You know how I'm here. Video the conversation behind. Right, people, so we reach at the bridge. People they are wait for the spot, so catch up. Girls in lit, okay. and my uh, my grandpa's from Georgetown. So, oh. is anybody from South Carolina? I always ask. We don't get too many of y'all. <laughs> Part of the. Uh... How how deep is it? The water. So this this is actually uh, it's our blue hole. We do have four of them. Uh, there has been many, many stories throughout the times to determine how deep our blue hole is. At one point, we did have some Civil War soldiers that went to swim in our blue hole. I know y'all can't tell right now, but it does get kind of hot out here. Uh, we are going to walk down here. So when it does get hot, this water, it does stay around 56 degrees year-round. So it feels pretty good to go for a little swim in. One day, these Civil War soldiers that were going for a swim in our blue hole, they did decide they had to measure how deep it was. 
So all of the soldiers, they all came together with a rock and a rope. They threw the rock and the rope down into the middle of the hole, took it out, and they measured the blue hole to be 437 feet deep. It's a pretty deep hole. Yeah, so our blue hole, it was at one point measured to be 437 feet deep. One day, though, a professor over at Western Kentucky University came down here and he said there is no way our hole is that deep. He was a hater. He couldn't believe in us. So that professor, he got a boat. He's a least favorite grad student. Put them all down in the middle of the hole. And after poking around for a couple hours, they eventually determined it was actually a whopping 17 feet deep. Wow. A little bit less. A little bit less than 437. Maybe those soldiers used a chain instead yeah. of a rope. Yeah, they were a little crazy. Yeah. So we do have a couple theories on how they got the measurement. So our blue hole, 17 feet. So rock and rope, 17 feet down to the bottom. Our river, 400 feet long, 17, 400. We'll loop the loop down there. Might have been how they got 437. Yeah, yeah, some of the Mississippi River, and in about three weeks or 19 whole days, all of our water is going to be in the Gulf of Mexico. Oh. If any of y'all want a cheap trip to Florida, Dollar General across the street has some floaties, <laughs> some snacks, <laughs> a lot of snacks, 19 days is a long time. Yeah. We're also going to go ahead and start walking down to the cave. I think we've got two more passengers we got to pick up right there. Lost River Cave, this is one of the largest natural cave openings east of the Mississippi River. We just never had any dynamite or mining any rocks out in our cave. Uh, anybody felt the, the cool breeze yet? If you haven't, you'll feel them again in the cave, I promise. Every 100 years. 
A cubic inch is roughly the size of a marshmallow. The ones you make a s'more out of. So this thing don't grow too quickly. Right now I'm going to close the host bee. But if y'all do look a little bit above the flow cell, you'll notice right over here, there's one part that is much, much darker. And a little bit farther down, this part is a lot darker. And unfortunately, those darker parts are what we call pollution scars. So we did get those pollution scars when there wasn't too many regulations on what people could dump into our water, especially when we were the largest illegal landfill in Kentucky. So we do have two of them. It's unfortunate, uh, but lucky for us, slowly over time, our new flowstone is going to cover up the pollution scar. So if y'all were to come back a couple hundred years, might be gone. I might still be here paying off my stupid loan. This thing works a little bit better than my mic does. If at any point y'all can't hear me or I'm too loud, y'all can just come here and shut up. I think I'm the youngest person on the boat, so y'all can just push me in out here. Is this anybody's first time ever in a cave? We have a couple stalactites, but compared to the other caves y'all have been in, you don't gotta lie to me, they're pretty small. Yeah, and the reason that our stalactites are so small compared to most other caves it's because of that 100 year flood I told y'all about. So every single time we get our 100 year flood, the cave fills all the way up to the top of the water and then some. And all of these black tights get a little haircut. We like to call it a cave shape. Completely. Yeah, I have, the world works in mysterious ways. I have no idea. Why is it so what? Uh, some of it is probably because of our lights. Uh, some of it is also probably because there's a little bit of mud in the water. And when it does get stirred up by the boat's engine, it just looks kind of cloudy. Y'all you know, on the right side, you might see some crawfish over there now. And I was also told over here is where one of the bats are. Uh, they did tell me this one is really, really hard to see, so we're not going to spend too much time looking for it. I have no idea where it is either. They just said next to this rock. There he is. That's the largest stalactite in the cave. I'll leave y'all some time for your oohs and ahs. I know, it's awesome, right? We like to call it the praying hands. If any of y'all see the upside down frag hands up there. Yeah, so that slag type is much, much larger than the rest of ours are. And mostly because there is a larger crack right there. Uh, but at one point it was a bunch of I'm sure that is a bat right there. Fun times. We got a lot of critters in here. Uh, we do have those crawfish. They're normally white or gray, but the farther and farther we get into hand, you know, we're gonna bump the wall. Lucky for us, though, we really don't get any of our spiders this far into the cave. They usually hang out outside the cave at the very entrance, so. We're all right. Uh, what we do get in here is something called, they're kind of cute, kind of creepy. Told y'all two rocks were supposed to bump, so one of them. Leaf, hanging out. Yeah. So those cave crickets, they sometimes get as large as your palm, but usually a little bit smaller. Uh, they do jump six feet in all directions. And they all, you can't touch it. If you do decide to touch it, flashlight, right in your face. Don't touch it.
Y'all will also notice as we're going back here, there are a couple little baby stalactites hanging out on the ceiling. Those little guys are actually called soda straws because they are still hollow in the middle, like a soda straw. No way. I'll tell you about it on the way out. Is that a hole? Nice little like vibes. And I need right. tea of river. And we're back to the hole. We did drill this hole in 2008. And that is actually how we got the concrete down here to build our dam. Uh, we did try putting the concrete on our boats and driving them in here. At the time, our boats were not powerful enough. They sank. Bad idea. So we just go about 80 feet directly to the surface. Back in 2008, they opened the dam with the hole. And when they were done, the land used to build a truest bank. But later on, y'all see me in my line with ski masks on. Mind your business. Many of y'all have student loans, your kids got student loans. We need to get away from it. Right? Y'all can get another look at the soda straw from the ceiling. My favorite one. Dinosaurs. What's the coolest dinosaur? <laughs> T-Rex, duh. I know that. Right up here, that's Terry. <laughs> Terry the T-Rex. <laughs> yeah. Terry hanging out. 
I say it's a T-Rex. One of my coworkers says it's a hippo. Another one of my coworkers says it's a shark. Does anybody see a hippo? No. Yeah, over there. Not a soul. Over there. Right there. Right there. Right. Yeah, right there. Uh, these are little stalagmites that are trying to form. Unfortunately, they probably are never going to because they do get so frequent floods. But you can see them everywhere. Did anybody get any cold drops of water on you? Yeah, yeah. The cold drops of water, those are called cave kisses. They do drop down from the ceiling and over time, that is how all of our stalactites do form. If you get enough of them, you might want to go buy a lottery ticket. They were two weeks of good luck. So we do have a couple, a couple kinds of bats. Anybody get any warm drops? <laughs> we call those the bat kisses. We, they, they, they're from the bats. We don't, we don't normally want bat kisses. You know, so we do have the tricolored bat. That is usually what we do have in here. Uh, the tricolored bats, they are three different shades of brown and about three and a half inches long. So like I said earlier, it's like a fuzzy looking chicken nugget. Uh, we also have brown bats. They're about seven inches long, so they are much, much bigger, but we don't have very many of them, so they're pretty hard to spot. And then the last kind of bat that we do have in the cave is the one that we do have a decent amount of. They're actually called the dingbat. They go on boat tours and buy shiny rocks from the shop. <laughs> Do we have any dingbats on the boat today? They usually wear glasses. <laughs> what? Oh, I forgot. <laughs> I usually have my contacts in. <laughs> and believe it or not, we are not the first people to ever hang out inside of our cave. Uh, a lot of the time, Civil War soldiers that measure our blue hole, they would also be in here. Uh, they would like to get candles, hold them up to the ceiling, and use the smoke from the candle to write their names, their loved ones' names, all that fun stuff. Uh, right over here, we do have our best example. You can see kind of a name in the heart. Also a bunch of black smudges up there. So those are our best representations of them. I'm sorry, I want to find the bat. I just remember they said it was eye level. It's like right over there. Very, very small, hard to see. Is there a couple on that rock too? Looks like it. I don't like it. Makes sense. Uh, this fountain, unfortunately, was the same water that goes right down Informed our pollution scar, so probably would have saved my five cents. I'd be the best. Yeah. I don't think you can buy anything for, for ten cents now. Just half a gun ball, maybe an eggshell. And but on that walking tour, they would show off a lot of things. Uh, sometimes Civil War artifacts from all those soldiers that were in here. Uh, the soldiers like to shoot their guns. They said it sounded like cannons. Fun stuff. Uh, they also left harmonic parts, spoons, buttons. Back then, they did not have like the standard dog tag. We all picture we think the dog tag. Uh, usually, those soldiers would have coins from their birth year, sometimes made in their birth estate and they would use those as dog tags on a necklace. So, got a lot of those in here, pretty cool stuff. Uh, we also did have the Paleo Native Americans in our cave. They were alive at the same time as woolly mammoths, mastodons, and the giant ground sloth, about six feet tall. So they would usually hunt down the mastodons and woolly mammoths in groups of 50 people, and they would hunt them down with spears, so a pointy rock on a stick, and right back at the bottom. Slippery. It was 10 cents back then, nowadays. That's about 20 bucks. If any of y'all got a 20 on you, I'm right here. The stairs are right there. Artifacts are hiding up there somewhere, I think. You know. 
And then also on our right side, y'all look right over here, where the emergency exit comes out at. Fun time. It'll be a great little crawl covered in mud, spider.